hello. So I am Crispy Wombat, and I recorded this once already. Quick time decided to be annoying with me. Anyway, hello. This is my Fallout 76 sort of trailer run-through breakdown sort of a thing. Because I've done this once already, uh, this should go a little bit smoother this time. I'm going to go full screen if it'll let me. Um, there we go. Now, I did find it interesting. Many of these please stand by splash screens are very similar, but this one follows the line weight and typeface and everything exactly perfectly to Fallout 3's, which isn't the most important detail, but I think it helps sort of confirm some of the theories on setting, which I'll get into in a bit. The color certainly is interesting, and I think it is a little bit of a nod to the fact that this is a newer, nicer looking game. I did watch it. This is very much like the uh, Fallout 3 trailer. Um, some people thought we were about to get a remaster based on how close it was. I think I saw somewhere that this is a Pip-Boy 2000 Mark IV. The Pip-Boy 2000 is the Pip-Boy that's featured in Fallout 1 and 2, um, but it was a handheld device, whereas this is wrist-worn. Not super important, but cool. Um, 27th of October, 2102. 2102 is significant because the bombs dropped in 2077, so this is only five years after the bombs dropped. That'll be a little bit more important as I go along, but essentially this is going to be a much rougher world out there. One that's only just beginning to wake back up after the bombs fell. It's likely very rough. Now, this is all interesting. Um, I'm going to try and zoom here uh, with my computer zoom feature. So, I believe Juicehead was the one who no noticed that there are sort of a mix of kids and adult things in the room. Uh, you've got a lot of kids' toys down here, uh, you know, baseballs and trucks and whatnot. Um, a Jingles the Moon Monkey. This backpack seems maybe a little bit on the smaller end, too. But the room doesn't seem like it's entirely belonging to a kid. The trees, than the mountains, okay, so this board game is pretty significant. Uh, right about now, I'm going to put up an image of what the front of this board game says. Um, this is a five-player uh, board game seems to be called Unstoppable Shindig but I think it, it so it seems to feature uh, intellectual properties of various various fictional uh, characters from the Fallout universe uh, which I find interesting it, these fictional characters together in a five-player game it makes me wonder if this is more likely to be a co-op experience of some sort. And this isn't the only hint that seems to exist. A lot of people thought that this was going to be an MMO, like, say, Elder Scrolls Online, but this might or might not be a clue. Uh, co-op would certainly be fitting for Fallout, and it's something people have been working on, trying to implement for a while in multiple Fallout games, and in Skyrim. Another thing, so another point that Juicehead pointed out that I find interesting, um, that definitely was something I was starting to notice, is we've got two seats here with two instruments. Two people, two players, potentially. There is another case of this happening uh, later in the trailer, too. Now, Vault 76 is kind of important. 
So that 25 year time span that I was talking about is kind of important. So here we see that this is Vault 76. Vault 76 is a vault that exists in previous Fallout games. It already has lore surrounding it. It's a control vault. So the vaults, of course, were all experiments, except for 17 of them that were control vaults. These were designed to open up 20 years after the bombs fell for people to begin to rebuild society. So the vault that we're going to be seeing here is actually going to be like a perfectly normal community as opposed to hell, <laughs> like many of them turned out to be. I'll talk about some more correlation and all later with other Fallout games, but let's keep going. So far there isn't a whole time else that I can see. I mean, you know, that mini nuke looks pretty mini nukish, you know. So this This is where I see a lot of very interesting things. So Backwoodsman and a Scout's Life, or Scout's Life. There's been talk that this is less of an MMO. In fact, the idea of it being an MMO has been denied by one Jason Schreier. Uh, he's an editor at Kotaku, and he's the one who broke news of the Fallout 4 Boston setting. So he has a good track record. He has said that it's going to be more of a survival-focused game, which some people have not felt greatly about. I think these magazines are a hint of that, these survival and outdoor skills magazines. Uh, Scout's Life is based on Boy's Life, which is a Boy Scout magazine. I don't know about Backwoodsmen, it's probably just their own um, IP, but this seems to support that claim. Of course, Fallout 4 released a survival mode not too long ago. I mean, maybe it was a year, year and a half. And people responded very well. They still preferred their own modded survival modes that they could configure. But survival gameplay and tougher gameplay was something people really seemed to appreciate. So a return of that idea doesn't seem like a bad thing. Uh, also. This seems to be in reference to the Mothership Zeta DLC for Fallout 3, which is where we got a pretty big reference to Vault 76 in the form of an interview with an NPC by an alien who had captured him. He was actually a Vault 76 dweller. I might put up an image of their dialogue here. Uh, I don't think it's too relevant to what's going on, but it's very cool that they've sort of acknowledged that. And there have been some claims about a lot of lore getting retconned, and I'm not sure I believe them, because they seem to be paying attention to their past a bit here. Now, this next line that you're about to hear is important. You must <laughs> There's been a lot of discussion of this game being a... having more of a focus on building. And I think I believe that. Fallout 4 had the whole settlement building system, and I think that was a test. A lot of people seem to think that that was a test to prepare it sort of for newer games, and potentially for this. Uh, of course, Bethesda will have had a lot of player reaction and player recommendations, so they can make changes and everything. And I think. I think the building system will be refined and better in Fallout 76 than it was in Fallout 4, and I think it'll make more sense. You are the first people to come back into the wasteland from the vaults. It is your job to rebuild society, so you're probably going to need to build shelters for yourselves. Um, these trophies don't really seem to mean anything. Best looking hair. I don't even know what that says. This one's kind of gobbledygook too. Uh, but it's like for being a hall monitor. Uh, you know, in appreciation for your commitment and dedication to our isolation program. Sacrificing many so some can live. You know, sort of humorous fallout stuff. You know, in recognition of 
the canned mystery meat experiment you volunteered to eat when no one else would. We are proud of you and glad you're not dead. It's sort of that typical stuff. I don't think any of it really plays into it. Though this certainly brings back the reminder of a child, you know, and the hall monitor one does too. Uh, you know, vault Halloween costume contest, first place. This all seems to, it seems to me, sort of not important, but something worth noticing. So we've been in vaults before in previous Fallout games, but there seems to be more clutter in general here. And I think that's further alluding to a refined settlement building system and customization for player spaces. I might be wrong, but there's a chance of it. It's also worth noting that these assets are for the most part higher resolution Fallout 4 assets. They're mostly the same. This has led to a lot of speculation that this game will be the Fallout New Vegas of Fallout 4, a game using similar assets but creating a new story, and potentially a better storytelling experience, which I would believe. As long as I don't have to save a child again, I'm fine. I find this sort of interesting. You've got the you are invited, like we've been seeing with Bethesda's sort of E3 celebration whatever that they've posted over the past few months. We have a Nuka World mug, which I don't think holds any real significance. Maybe there will be a Nuka World around, I don't know. But Nuka World was sort of the Disneyland of of the Fallout universe, and it existed pre-war. Juicehead pointed out, um, sort of interestingly, that apparently this fan model isn't like any we've seen before. I don't know how relevant that is. It might not be, but it's neat, I guess. Also, uh, there seem to be sort of circuit boards on the desk. I can't quite figure out what this is. You've got a sort of barrel-shaped laser-looking thing attached to an angled bit. I mean, uh, I don't know. It could just be a bunch of junk on a desk. Who knows? Again, back to the two seats, two players, co-op theorization that exists. It's sort of an interesting uh, thing to notice for sure. Also, likely return of animals, that food bowl over there, um, seems significant to me. Um, other than that, just sort of the same sort of realistic clutter and lived-in feel. Let's keep going. Now, there's been sort of talk about what all this is. I mean, so Reclamation Day is very likely to be the day that after 20 years in the vault, they went back out to reclaim their home. And it would be something that's very celebrated. I believe that these people would still be very much under the influence of what vault Tech has told them. They would, you know, you can see that there's sort of trees and all sorts of stuff going on here. It's, it's very nice. They would want to hype them up and celebrate. So, you know, it seems like with the Vault Boys pointing in one direction and with how everything has been left and is empty, it's that everyone was encouraged to leave the vault to go rebuild. There wasn't anyone left behind. So, something I noticed is that this is all very detailed. The weave of the fabric and the shininess and scuffedness of the sort of zipper area and the dirty sort of cracks in his hand and, and all of the detail on the Pip-Boy. It's very high resolution. This is just a trailer. It's a pre-rendered in-engine trailer. So this could mean nothing, but overall this trailer has looked slightly shinier than Fallout 4 normally does. Slightly nicer. Not massively. I don't think there are major engine improvements that have been made, but we'll certainly see. Also, there it is again, you know, Pip-Boy Model 2000 Mark. Uh, that would be a 6, actually, which is interesting. Uh, but there's your Pip-Boy. So that wire I don't know if you saw, was connected to that badge he's got on. People wonder if it's radio communications equipment or something. 
Who knows? In Bolt 76, our future begins. So, that's about all I've got. Thank you for watching. If this is on Reddit, please discuss and enjoy. You know, this is all very interesting. We're certainly in a very interesting potential future for Fallout. I think, personally, that this is a side game. I don't think it's really a main series Fallout. I think there will be a Fallout 5, because that just makes sense. Bethesda have said they're committed to single-player experiences. I also think that this is going to have its own single-player experience. I don't think they're stupid enough to make an online-only Fallout. I think they know that fans would hate that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please discuss, comment, react, do whatever, and have a nice day.